Galileo, Galileo, Galileo Figaro. Let's talk about Galileo Galilei, published by Pink Troubadour, and is going to be coming to North America soon, uh, in quarter two of 2025, with by Capstone Games. Galileo Galilei is designed by Thomas Holak, and it's going to play in about two hours, and it's for one to four players. I have played it so far at uh, two, three, and four players, and I have found it to be very scalable, which is quite nice. So let's get into it. On your turn, you're gonna move your telescope one to three spaces. This is kind of like a rondelle, but it's a little bit fixed. And then you're gonna do the actions, and then you're gonna do cleanup. During the action phase, you're gonna get the top and the bottom action. You can do them in any order. And these are gonna allow you to get things like increasing the value of your dice that you need to go and observe objects, either major or minor, or you can go up on the university track, or you can go and get some uh, inquisitors moved along, uh, or you can get more dice, you can put comets on the board. There's a lot of different actions uh, that give you a lot of strategies on how to win. There are also four other free actions you can do on your turn, and these are very powerful. Do not sleep on these. One of them can give you a new die, which you could be resource constrained here. Others ones can increase the pip or change the color of the die. Put another comment on the board, or my personal favorite, moving more inquisitors along. The board has a variable setup, so the universities will change each time to give you a different type of scoring. There are also achievements that the first person there will get higher points than the other people who get that achievement, and two of these are random during the game, and two of them were always there. Let's talk about those Inquisitors more. The game is set at the turn of the century when these astronomers are vying for the skies, but they're getting a little bit too much attention from the church. And so you have to persuade the Inquisitors throughout the game in order to not lose a ton of points at the end. This mechanic uh, felt like it had a lot of tension in here because I was like, oh, do I want to take that card? Uh, cause it's gonna give me an Inquisitor. That one's gonna move an Inquisitor and I don't really wanna trigger the Inquisition right now uh, and get negative points. So it's kind of cool. But what happens here is you're gonna add up all of the Inquisitors that you have in your cellar. And most of these are negative points. There's only one positive spot. And then so you're going to move that many spaces on the reputation track. However, what I found really cool is you're never gonna go beyond 10. So you could pile up on the Inquisitors and only ever lose two points each time, which is not a lot of points because if you observe an object, you're getting somewhere between five to 16 points depending on the size of the object, which is really cool. Then at the end of the game, wherever your reputation lands is the negative or positive points you're gonna get, plus you're gonna get negative or positive points for the remaining Inquisitors in your cellar. That I found to be a nice end game mechanic to help balance things out, which was really cool. Overall, the game I have found plays very smooth. Your turns are very quick. There's not a lot of downtime and you get this really cool sense that you're actually exploring and uh, discovering all of these things, which is really cool. Another awesome mechanic I found was once you do discover an object, you get to place it into your library and so you can research kind of it further. And so this is another spot where you can get various actions and bonuses throughout the game, which is cool. There is a lot of different ways that you can make combos and it feels very satisfying when you've managed to do a good, good, good combo. The game ends when the observation deck has ran out you get one final turn, and then you're gonna score up your points. So you're gonna get the points that you had on the board, plus the points that you're going to win or lose from the Inquisition, as well as any of the ones that you're getting from the university, which are all multipliers, despite there being a printing error on the university tiles. Some of them don't have the X symbol on the multiplier. They are all multipliers, don't worry. Then after that, whoever has the most points wins. Surprise! Now, if you want even a more advanced game, you can add in the player abilities for each of the astronomers. We've played with these a couple of times and they do not change the game too much. It's just another cool little aspect of something of choice that you can do. If you're playing for the first time, definitely go without them because you don't have to explain as many rules uh, and you can not be bogged down by too many su support choices. When it gets uh, into the thick of it, go ahead, add these in, switch them up every now and then. We have found that there doesn't seem to be too much of a first player advantage. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any particular balancing issues with any of these particular ones. This is by far a very well balanced, very quick playing Euro with a great weight to it. And honestly, probably one of my favorites so far. And I don't do favorites very well. I don't rate things very well highly either, but this is definitely high on the BGG rating scale. I think I put it in as a nine, in fact, on my BGG. So this gets a glowing review from me. Give it a check out when it comes to North America next year from Capstone Games. 
and make sure you give me a check out, like, subscribe, and follow along for more.